Well, Father George Holtz from the Harvard Catholic Center, we are in the stair at St. Paul's Church before Christmas, and it gives us a, an apt background to think of Palm Sunday and indeed of Holy Week. In Holy Week on Good Friday, we read a Passion of the Lord. Every year we read the Passion according to St. John. Often St. John's Gospel is reserved for the High Holy Days. And then on, on Palm Sunday, we read one of the three synoptics. So it's the only Sunday of the year we read the Passion of Christ. Uh, and it is uh, according to what year it's being read, which evangelists, and so this year it's the Passion according to St. Mark. Mark is the earliest of the evangelists, invented, as they say, the, the genre of the, of the Gospel. And uh, it's the shortest of the Passions. And in a certain sense, the most fast-paced, the most crisp and clear, uh, you might also say the most stark, the most stark. Uh, he has a way of juxtaposing things, sort of putting the threesome with something positive at the center, uh, but then horrors on either side. So for instance, at the beginning, uh, the officials are plotting uh, against Christ and there's treachery in the air, and uh, he's put a mark down. And then the third thing would be the, uh, the disciples, Iscariot about to sell for pieces of silver, and uh, then Peter, uh, asserting endlessly that he will never betray him, he will never forget him, he will never deny him, and the others go on the wall as well, in a statement that's really not to be vindicated. But then between those things one and three, the second that Mark makes note of is his, uh, his haunting. And that is a woman who is not named, a woman who is not named, who comes in, and she has an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, and it's quite costly, quite expensive. She broke it and she poured it on his head to anoint him, to anoint him for burial, as no one else did. And they were infuriated with her, and of course, the Iscariot spoke about the expense of it and so on, it could have been used for the poor, which was rarely his concern. But instead, Christ says, let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. She has done what she could. She has done what she could. She has anticipated and went in my body for burial. And then I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. And then think of it whenever we pro pro proclaim the gospel every Sunday or celebrate the Eucharist, we will remember what Christ has done for our sake. He the servant, the suffering servant, the beginning reading from the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, is Isaiah 50, the suffering servant, and suffering indeed he is, and servant of all of us, uh, indeed, indeed he is. And then at the end, the matter of, uh, or excuse me, the epistle, the matter of Philippians, uh, the matter of uh, the second chapter of Philippians, verses 6 to 11, which encapsulates so much the Christian message in a parcel. And that's saying, Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, and this is great gift did not regard equality with God something to be grasped at. Instead, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. If we think of the cross, it's almost seemed to me that it captures two things at the same time, a truth about God and a sad truth about us. The truth about God, God's love entering the world in the form of the gift of his son and his love for us and Christ's love for us too, the vertical bar. Then the horizontal bar as if human treachery and evil and unconcern and disinterest and bloody mindedness would be able to blot out what God had done by our inadvertence. But as we learn, that was not to be. As Holy Week goes on into Holy Saturday night and Easter Sunday, we learn that our word before God was not, thank God, the last word. And we learn as well that uh, God greatly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name which is above every name, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us give thanks. Amen. God bless you. See you here in Holy Week.